I'm back at 7.41 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, in the United States and New Jersey. Haven't been able to get online all day, so I have no clue or idea what's been happening or not, or with my channel or any anything. I just uh, continue to have this crushing, unbearable sadness and sorrow not of myself, not any, anything to do with me, I'm not worried about anything whatsoever. I don't think it has anything to do with me. It's coming strongly, so strongly from God's Spirit, from Jesus, I believe, Jesus himself. That's, I think, what he's feeling. And it's almost unbearable. It just comes out of nowhere. And right in the middle of my being, the deepest part, and I feel it right now, so... Maybe he's ready to, to appear. I know that for a fact, but I'm just wording it that way. Maybe that's part of this. And also because of his judgment and his church and a lot of things. Um, of course, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know his mind, but through his spirit, because his spirit is in me, I sense, you know, basically from his spirit what what's being shown to me or what I can feel, you know, because he's there with me and what he might be feeling by sharing that through our spirit. And I, I can't tell you how strong this is. I don't know if I've ever had such a strong feeling and it's, it's even more strong as I'm speaking here. Um, you know, you, you could say, well, how could Jesus be sad? Uh, or how do you know? Or why is he sad? Or why is he sorrowful? Well, think about it. Because of everything, every single thing that there is, he's about to judge the entire world. He's about to take his church out of here. He sees his church. He sees the condition of things, like I spoke of in the last video. Hopefully some um, did listen to that. I think it was a very important video. And I felt his spirit, just as I do this minute, it's even stronger as I'm saying these words, piercing right through me. It's right in the center of my being. Just like Jesus said, that the life he gives to us will will have as if uh, living water in in our in the middle of our being rivers rivers of living water in our innermost being that's the best way I could describe what I'm feeling right now and undoubtedly his spirit undoubtedly he's he's ready to to appear here I don't know when a last video will be but I'm what I'm telling you right now is um, this sense in me and what he seems to be saying through his spirit to me is so powerful like a last kind of warning a last minute last way of warning or telling us telling everyone and you know i don't know like how he feels that's how he's feeling and that's i think how he's feeling just how i'm feeling how i'm expressing this of course of course he has joy that he's going to return and take take his bride with him, of course. But the world is going to be judged, all right? The Bible says God takes no delight in, in the destruction of the wicked, all right? And again, because of the things that I've been warning, warning about year after year after year, that basically hasn't been heeded, heeded whatsoever, especially with the self-righteous, um... What else can I say? I mean, if they're going to remain in their self-righteousness, regardless if they say they believe in Jesus' return and the rapture and their dreams and everything else, well, how could that be? Well, because it is, unfortunately, it's a total deception. Just like Jesus said, there's going to be those coming to him and saying, Lord, Lord, calling him Lord. Okay. Oh, he's Lord of our life. He's Lord of my life. So supposedly he was Lord over their life. He was Lord that they knew he was he was Lord. He was Jesus. Okay, you know, didn't we? He they would say to him, are going to say that to him. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do all these great signs? And didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? Didn't we do great work, good works, and and all these things? Didn't we try to live holy and righteous? And it's not from him. I'm telling you, it's not from him. Your righteousness is filthy rags. I'm giving a warning. You don't want to listen? It's What can you do? It's not on me. It's not on Jesus. 
He came to bring life and to set you free, eternal life. And it's free. It's free. He wants to give it to you. Will you take it or you, will you keep refusing it in your, own, in your own self, doing your thing, trying to be holy, trying to do all this and that and the other thing, claiming that you're, you're right with God and you're not because you're doing it of yourself. It's not, it's not from the righteousness of Christ. You haven't died to yourself and become a new creation. Old things pass away. All things, all things become new. It's not even you anymore. That's what they don't understand. It's a new person, a new brought to life spiritual person because Jesus is there and he create, creates that newness in us. And that's the only thing that matters. And he will dwell in you if that happens. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you believe, all your miracles, that you believe in the rapture. You, you went to heaven, you claim, just like all those near-death experiences. Um, how many people have had those experiences? And I'm not going to diverge into all of this. But where, are they saved after that? I mean, it, it's nice. They say they saw Jesus. They say they saw heaven. They saw, say they saw that. But are they saved? And are you saved despite all that you say? Whether it's supernatural or your doctrine or you're trying to live holy and be worthy and follow Jesus and make him Lord of your life and all, all those things, that's just an excuse for not believing his grace to save you alone. Picking up your cross, denying yourself, all those things when all Jesus was talking about when he said that had to do with being called to do something. In other words, in other words, it will take your it will take the person's time, their life, and everything to follow him in a calling. That's all that meant. And that they would have to leave things behind in order to follow him. Like their, he, he mentioned their family or whatever they were doing, maybe their job or whatever it is. It had nothing to do with salvation. It had to do with Jesus was just telling them, look, um, this is going to you know, take up everything. It's going to change your life, re rearrange it. You might have to leave your family, go here and there, or you might, you know, be persecuted or be put in jail or, or whatever. He was telling you, you know, that's the cost it's going to be. So um, when I, if I'm, if I gave you, give you a calling, you know, this is to be expected. That's all he was talking about. He wasn't talking about we're co-redeemers of, of carrying our cross so that what we could do causes us to stay saved. And if we don't, then we're going to lose it. We're not going to stay saved. And I'm not yelling. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking loudly, and I realize that. But it's very important, so important. Because like I say, with this feeling I'm having inside of me, I think Jesus is going to come. That's what this is all about. That sign, I was given two signs. I don't, you know, whatever. I believe it has to do with a last-minute warning of those faces and the way I felt in the last video and right now speaking these words, just something coming out of me. His spirit is just yelling, blurting this out, all right? His judgment is coming. It's any second, and so is he to return, and he wants to take you with him. But he can't if you're staying in your own righteousness and you're not born of his spirit. No matter what you say, and there's there's many, many, the bulk of everyone out there running around doing their own thing and their own righteousness, and they're not saved. Not They're not saved. Jesus hasn't come into their, their life, their heart, their being, and changed them and transformed them and taken away their sin, and they know that, and they're glad about that, and they don't want to sin, and they they are led into righteousness the paths of righteousness for his sake and the paths that he brings them gladly to do his works that have nothing to do with salvation for you earning it or keeping it again i'm sorry if i'm if i'm getting uh you know a little loud here but i, I have to say that it's so important it's coming from jesus i think that's what he's feeling right now just every single thing i just tell told you i think it's coming from him through his spirit that's what he wants to say this is no joke. The time is at hand. Even his true church has been led into all kinds of things that are not of him and have, have swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. And I think he's, a, he's very sorrowful about that instead of just coming to him and the simpleness of what salvation means without all this other um, extemporaneous outer 
fringe stuff, whatever it is, doctrines or going after signs or whatever it is. And I've tried, tried to warn against these Gnostic grace wolves preaching a false gospel, a dead gospel, a half gospel, but it hasn't been heeded, heeded whatsoever. It's not a change of mind. It's not a change of mind to re repent. It means a change of mind to turn and believe the gospel. That's all head, head knowledge. That's the same thing that the self-righteous are doing, the works crowd. All right? It's Jesus. He's going to save you. That's all. And he's, is he in you? Like Paul said, know ye not that Christ be in you, lest you be reprobates? Is he in you? Has he changed you? Are you a new creation in him? A new person? The old passed away? Dead? Your old self? Walking in the newness of that life? Overcoming sin by his spirit alone? It's a completely different, different paradigm out there. 99% than all the things that I've been preaching and teaching and talking about. Totally different paradigm. Where is Jesus? Where is Jesus in any of it? It has been, he's been nowhere. He's been out, cast out, cast away unknowingly. And that's why he's sorrowful. A lot of people say they know a lot of things and claim to know a lot of things and seem to claim to know scripture and they know nothing because they don't know Jesus. All right. Again, it doesn't matter if it's those who say they believe by grace or works or any other way. Or claim that their experiences and dreams and signs and and fact that the, they believe in the rapture and are waiting for that is some indication of their spiritual uh, condition or justification before God. Like I just said, there's going to be many, many. Jesus said, many, many. He said, many, many will come to me in that day. Okay, you could read it for yourself. And they claim to do supernatural signs in his name. And they believed they were doing it and, and had signs. They thought they were signs from Jesus doing it in his name. Doing this, doing that. They were the good ones. They were the good, the good ones. They weren't the, the false grace uh, crowd. They were proving. They were walking the walk that they said they were walking. And it's their own walk. They're following their own holiness. I mean, if you can't feel his spirit... In this video, by these words, I don't know what to tell you. It's certain his spirit is certainly blasting right through me, right through the, my soul, and out of my mouth here. He's returning. He's returning. Yes, he is, and that's what he's trying to say here. He is coming. This is not going to delay. Neither is for those who are not found in him. He and you, and you and him. You don't hear any of this. Nothing. I don't know if there's anyone on YouTube. I'm not boasting. But who sa even, sa even says these things. Even talks about them. And I'm talking about the life. The life in Christ. That Jesus himself spoke of. That he would give. And he gives right now. It's inner. Inner. Not just of your mind. Not just of doing this and that. Your spiritual duties and tasks. In fear. Thinking that if you don't perform them perfectly enough and well enough and you're trying to stay close to God so that you don't lose your salvation you're trying to do this read enough verses and repent enough make sure you got th this you know did I did I forget this one well I did something 38 years ago well gee I, I now I'm remembering it so if I don't repent to that then you know gee he might not take me is that the gospel no that is not the gospel that is not the gospel, none of that. And that's not abiding in, in, abiding in him by trying to do all these, those things and saying, well, we have to abide in him. That's a pure works. All those terms, all those things are works. And they rely on yourself to be righteous and holy. And then blame anyone who's relying just on Jesus' grace who are, who are saved, not to, just by the term grace, not just by some... Uh, scripture and acknowledging what grace means but because Jesus himself is in you in them he's the grace all right he's grace I don't think hardly anyone even understands when I say those things what do I mean Jesus is grace Jesus is salvation Jesus is our works Jesus is our faith who 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 
got that when I've said that? Or who is going to even accept that as I'm saying this now? It, does it go over your head, you know, what I'm saying? If it does, then it, it proves what I'm saying exactly. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be strange. None of this should be strange. He's our repentance once and for all. He's our sacrifice once and for all for sin. He's everything there is that we simply take in and accept and receive of him, not just by word, not just by some proclamation or, or confession or, or claim or any of those things. It's all, it's all works. It's all Gnostic. All those, all those verses like, if you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead, you will be saved. So do this and that, one plus one equals two, and that's it. You're good to go. Nothing, anything about going to Jesus, him changing you, transforming you, or, or any other such thing, putting his spirit in you and having his fruits, having a divine encounter with him and being saved forever. Those verses, those things I just said are the result of that, are the result of that experience with him. Not to do that and then you become saved without the other, without the life in you, without Christ in you. With grace, it's become, do this and this and that. Okay, now you're saved. Nothing else. Just do this, that, and that, and okay, now, now you're saved. Change your mind. Turn and believe the gospel. That's only half the gospel. Jesus is the gospel. You could only get that life from him. The devil will give you all the grace that you want, that you could ever want, if he could twist it, everything, twist the gospel, and keep Jesus from in, in you, from indwelling you, from changing you, from really, truly, absolutely being totally forgiven and washed by his blood and his spirit within. And he's put those false teachers in positions who are the dispensers of, of this false grace and indoctrinate. The indoctrination is complete. Just about the whole of grace community or those who say they believe are indoctrinated by all of this and don't even know it. A direct term is, is brainwashed. Uh, no one seemed to understand a word of, of, of what I was talking about all of this and may not even at this moment. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? They're false. They don't have Christ's spirit within me. I'm proclaiming this through, through Jesus Christ, through his spirit. They do not have Jesus Christ in them. They do not. They're leading and have led. I feel Jesus' spirit right within me to t say this. They're the ones that have been leading his people, his church, his sheep astray. Okay, and this is coming right from him, from his spirit. I feel this. Receive it if you want or reject it. I'm not like proclaiming like some I'm some oracle or prophet saying this. I'm just saying his spirit's gushing right through me to say these words, all right? And they're going to be judged if they haven't been judged or already in some way in this life already. And they're going to be exposed. Whenever Jesus exposes them, why ever, he, why ever he's allowing this to go on, well, his people, his sheep, Many of them won't listen. They will not, they, they do not hear his voice. They do not know his spirit. And that's the sad part about it. That's not a condemnation. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy to Jesus. That's why I say I'm mourning his church because Jesus is mourning his church, not in condemnation. That's not what I'm saying because they, they don't come to him. They don't understand. They don't see he's everything, that Jesus is everything there is. Everything there is. And it's been made into a Sunday school, an elementary class. That's what grace has become. And they're slick-tongued. And they let false doctrines sleep through, uh, sneak through the cracks. The church just lets it go. Can't recognize all their false uh, teachings their false gospel and just lets it go and continues to listen to them and be led astray. I believe 
100% that some of them or many of them are actually occultists or those put there or their purpose is to deceive the church, okay? Absolutely have believed that and believe that right this second with all my soul. And they're put there to sow confusion and discord in the true church between not only this fake grace crowd, but the, the works crowd. And the devil's just laughing at the whole lot, the whole bunch of everyone. Because he's done this, he's twisted everything upside down and I see it. Why do I see it? Because Jesus sees it and he shows me and he's, he tells me, he shows me what the truth is. And that, that's called discernment. I'm not being belittling to anyone when I say that. I mean, all, all I have to do is look at someone's channel, look at their subscriptions or look at their uh, video preferences or liked videos or whatever they show of someone else's video. And I get an idea of where they're coming from spiritually. And I'm telling you again, the Holy Spirit speaking through me, I feel so strongly. 99% of that is garbage because they, they have works teachers mixed with grace teachers, mi mixed with mystical teachers, mixed with, mixed with Gnostic teachers or believers or whatever, whoever they are, or whatever they're on YouTube for claiming to, to be there to do. And things about their life and circumstances don't line up. You, they can't say when they were saved. Now, I'm talking about these so-called grace teachers, preachers, whoever they are. And some of them are very gung-ho on the rapture. And I sense absolutely, I don't sense God's spirit in any of that. Some of them could be very hyper, reducing, reducing the gospel to ABCs to like a child. And all this has per penetrated all of this grace everywhere. It's, it's ABC, ABCD, do this, admit, believe, confess, and that's it. Yes, there's nothing unscriptural about that, but it's dead because Jesus isn't in it. You're not, you're not led to him. No one is led to him. There's nothing, no talk about any of the, of the things that I talk about. No sense of the Holy Spirit there. No confirmations of that. Their fruits are, I don't know what. It's not of God. It's not peaceful. I can't watch it. Some are sensational and, and just get an uh, electric feeling. It's not God's spirit. I'm telling you, it's not. I don't care who they are. They tell you Jesus is coming. They had all these dreams. They've been to heaven. They've been caught up. Um, you can't go by that. I'm telling you, you can't go by it. I think a lot of these are just phonies, just plain phonies, and I have information and things I know about that I'm not going to share, and I never have, because it, it, it doesn't matter, because even if I did, all it would do is cause more, uh, whatever you want to call it, towards me. Not that that's the reason, but it, it's just going to be fruitless, because no one will listen. If you're not listening to what I'm saying in general and doctrinally, then that's not gonna, it's not going to matter. I've warned and warned and warned. These are these are wolves. Again, whether it's grace wolves, works wolves, salvationist wolves, repentance wolves, or those who deceive you because they they seem to have so many signs or words. A lot of these words, these ones who come on there, they seem like they're the they're the authorities, and God gave them these big words, and they're they're like a, an oracle for God, a spokesman, a prophet. They're not. I don't sense God in any of that. I don't sense His Spirit in it. It just gives me the creeps. It. It. I don't feel Him in that. I can't listen to it. It doesn't seem it come, like it comes from Him, and that. That's the bulk of what's out there. You don't have to listen to me. Don't. Don't listen to me. If it's not from Jesus, then then run away from it. But if it is and it's the truth, then it is the truth. You don't want to listen to the truth then I can't do anything about it. Jesus can't do anything about it. He can and he will in judgment, but he's merciful and he's letting things go for that reason, for others come around, others be saved. No matter who it is, that's his heart to save, not to condemn, not to condemn, not to destroy, not to have to judge. He didn't create the world to judge, to send multitudes to hell. Do you think that makes him feel good? When that's not his purpose, his pur he's love. God is love. 
uh, he he for sure has anger against sin and will will judge and is about to but that's the very last straw that's all he could endure of his endless boundless mercy and grace that he that's it it's drained he's he's drained it to the last drop that he he can't hold back and forbear any longer and that's not his will that's never been his will to create man or to create angels or to anything that exists but to give life to give life to allow others to experience life and everlasting life forever and that's what Jesus came to redeem us to have to have and to hold within us to have and to hold Jesus